Hey there, my name is Dr. Knott, and this is Pyre, and we are on Kalmer Isle. We just beat the dissidents last time, so let's go into the Black Wagon and see what's going on. With Sir Gilman. Find Sir Gilman searching intently for something or other. His eye is shut tight, his brow furrowed in deep concentration. He acknowledges your presence in the most minimal way possible, and continues scanning the environment. You shall have to forgive this knight's impertinence to you, Master Reader, for he is on the hunt at this time. Using his acute sense of hearing, which is much more acute whilst underwater but shall have to suffice in this case, he shall track down a most elusive character. A character who has eluded this knight time and time again, from whom this knight seeks to learn still superior evasive strategies, apl applicable when next he may conduct the rites. Hold, is that? You have no idea to whom he is referring when... Stick it up, worm. You're caught. Out. You've wrung your neck just now, you know. Or could've, rather. Ah, this knight has failed again. Alas, Master Ruki, once more you have outwitted this poor knight and outmaneuvered him. Please, you must reveal the secret to your speed and cunning. Take it easy, chum. You're not half bad yourself. Besides, I was getting pretty sick of running circles around all these slowpokes before he showed up while we were out at sea. You truly mean that, Master Rookie? But, no, it cannot be. But this knight has nary seen anyone as daft and fleet of foot as you. Certainly, it must be advantageous to possess four feet, whilst this knight has but one, if so it may be called. And yet, we all are born with necessary means, and we must all make do. Uh, look, chum, you got to stop being so hard on yourself already. You already thought maybe you ought to give yourself a break once in a while. You ever thought. Never! This knight deserves no break, not while there is honor to be gained. He is merely a worm, one of roughly eight billion of his kind. Thus, he must strive to be remarkable and to exceed what is expected of him. Guess what, chum, you went and did that already. I thought all you sea dominion types were just a bunch of meatheads who didn't care for nothing but a fight. But you've been downright decent. You even made me break a sweat a couple times out there when I thought maybe we could we got somebody quicker on his foot than me. The point I'm trying to make is it's been good having you with us. I always say, it's worth having someone quick around to keep you on your toes. For a moment, you wonder if Sir Gilman is about to weep. Sensing the same, Rookie immediately changes the subject. Now, come on, you want to go another round or what? There's some good hiding spots outside where I can show you how we curs get the drop on unwary passerby, passers by, in a very honorable way. This knight would be most honored, Master Rookie. As the two of them head off to further train together, you catch notice of the Book of Rights there in the wagon. Rights, which so stress trust and reliance on one's fellow exiles. The eight scribes likely did not envision Sir Gilman and Rookie in particular as conductors of their sacred tradition. Yet, perhaps there is the sort of kinship which they had in mind. Cool, they're getting along. That's always good in tight quarters. Let's continue. We have to head back to Mount Elodiol. See if we can actually not fail this time. But, you know, last time was a special, special case. Our opponents were cheating, and I will never forget that. Emperor's Ascent. You sense Sir Gilman shall gain favor from the scribes if you land there, or... Since Volfred shall gain favor from the scribes. Let's do Sir Gilman. I don't know how to use Volfred that well. We can bring Sir Gilman onto this next right. You make landing upon, upon Mount Elodiel, where Volfred pulls you aside while the others complete the post-flight inspection. He puffs at his pipe before speaking up. Ligaratus. Reader, as you know, I now wear the raiments once again. This means that I, myself, may soon be worthy to regain my freedom in the eyes of the eight scribes. Know, however, that it is not my wish to go just yet. It is true I could be of some benefit to our plan back in the Commonwealth, but I feel my place is here for the time being. Perhaps once the Nightwings are on a sure footing in their path, my time shall come. Those are my feelings on the matter, and I wanted you to know. I shall, of course, defer to you. Our path is not a con 
is not to contradict the reader's will. Auditoros. Anyway, I trust that all of this, yourself included, shall find our freedom. Or <laughs> all of us. If not soon, then by when all of this is over. Oh, Volfred. Volfred, Volfred. You're not going anywhere. At least not anytime soon. Having completed the post-flight inspection, you and Sir Gilman visit the monument of Trieste Titis, Titis, here in Emperor's Ascent. It seems that this knight's test of honor is just beginning to begin. He is to understand the stars themselves are vanishing? Impossible, he says, for how can there be such a thing as honor in this world if the stars themselves are wont to leave this world behind? Soon, he has finished paying his respects. You return to the wagon in silence, feeling as though Trieste Titis has shown you favor. You soon shall ascend the mountain, though there is time now to pursue your vocations. So he got plus one quickness, that's it. Except the blessing. Let's see who's in here. Alright, Sir Gilman, fiery eyed Sir Gilman. Sir Gilman is training intently when you approach. Master Reader, this knight was so engulfed in memories of the Sea Dominion that he failed to detect your stealthy advance on his position. Splendidly done. This knight would have been vanquished by you easily. This knight is fortunate to have you as an ally rather than a mortal foe. His kind routinely clamors from the depths of the Sea Dominion to seek greater glory and, perhaps, a slightly longer life expectancy within your commonwealth. Such an honor it would be to be assigned the rank of knight and be conscripted onto the front lines of the Commonwealth against their vicious winged enemies. In the Sea Dominion, it was our ultimate goal to fight our way to the surface, past our brethren, past the razor reefs, the strangle kelp, the snaggle fins that prey upon our kind. Sir, G Sir Gilman continues listing undersea dangers and terrors for some time. Past the blood sniffers, the electric scallops, the rogue worms of the frigid current, paralyzing nets of the far fishers, and even past the scalding waters of the glowing trench. Finally, he trails off. Yet, even despite the myriad challenges of living in the Sea Dominion, it is, it is each would-be Worm Knight's duty to abandon that place at his or her soonest convenience. How humorous it was to learn that life within your commonwealth had quite a bit of in common with our existence under sea was not all pomp and glory as the stories told. Perhaps it is our lot, as warm knights, to bring strife with us, wherever we should go, for even here, it seems, is our kind pitted both against our brethren and all others. He remains silent for a while, but then, ah well, it is fortunate that this knight found within this place so fine a company as yours. It is a most different change of pace, to strive toward a common purpose rather than strive constantly to outperform each other's or each other toward one's own self-gain. Although, to the extent we are competing still, this knight shall ever strive to take the lead. Make no mistake about that, Master Reader. This knight was born to be the best, just like all the billions like him. Now, he is off to steal himself. Your pardon, Master Reader. He scoots off somewhere to continue with his self-made training regimen. Plus one quickness again. All right. I forgot we are we are facing the pyre hearts. Uh, I I didn't do this. We'll just we'll just skip it this time. It's okay. So I could forage for resources. I think we should. Let's do that one. We haven't done that one in a while. Also studying in private. So we got the scribe monuments. You sense a potent serum here. Or the Frozen Hills. He sent something Falcon Ron values here. Let's do that because we need to buy more things. What's that? Discarded Antique. Alright. Alright. Temple Cistern. Ray shall gain favor from the scribes. I like that because I like using Ray. Or Bertrude. Ooh. Let's, let's get Bertrude. I think I'm going to go... Wait, I have to use Rookie because I want him to go. Oh crap. Rookie, Sir Gilman, and Bertrude? En route to the mountaintop, you pass by a monument to Lou Sklorian. Sklorian. However you say it, I still can't say it. And Bertrude happens to take notice. 
the ancient gods who flit among the stars, grant thy boon on sandalwood. One is to be granted, for he shall put it to good use. He seems to still believe in ye, to some extent at least. Thus shall we do the same, for now, and honor thy traditions. Soon she has finished paying her respects. As you prepare to continue your ascent, you sense that Lu Sklorian, Sklorian has shown her favor. Plus two presents. Ooh, she's gonna have a massive aura. I like that. You and your fellow exiles gather at the foot of Scribe's Gate before an archway carved of stone. Where stands the Gate Guardian? Greetings to you, Celeste. I see the exiles of the Nightwings have returned, even as the cycle of the rites begins drawing to a close. The Nightwings accept this as the will of the scribes. <laughs> the Gate Guardian laughs at this softly for some reason. And you, Tariq, do you accept their will as well? But the lone minstrel does not answer her. It is no matter. Now, Nightwings, each of you come forth and state what it is that you seek whilst crossing a scribe's gate. One by one, the Nightwings declare themselves, who all pass through as before. When Volfred takes his turn, Celeste stops him. Bye. You, I see you wear the raiments once again. Explain. The cycle of the rites is ending, but I do not know exactly why I have my fears. One of my contemporaries, he who fell from the summit long ago, he lives and seeks his liberty again. He stands against us now and believes his triumvirate to be the true Nightwings. I remember well the contemporary whom you mean. Then the Nightwings stand divided. Yes, and so I wear the raiments once again, in case that it may help to right this wrong. For I am Volfred Sandalwood, and I seek liberty for each of us, so that one day we all might stand shoulder to shoulder on the other side and bring our freedom to the people there. She considers Volfred's words for a moment. I see. Then move along. The Guardian of Scribe's Gate regards you all, and then she beckons you onward. The eight scribes bid the Nightwings welcome, go forth with glory. Celeste? What is it, Tariq? The will of the scribes, long have we both followed it, and I think you would agree. In equal measure has it drawn us close, as separated us. But, if their aim now is to keep us apart, for another age or longer, then... No, I do not accept their will. You blaspheme, Tariq, and at the gate, no less. The lone minstrel simply puts his hat back on. Then, may the scribes themselves admonish me. Until tomorrow night, Celeste. Let's get this show on the road in front of the big Liberation Right book. Having reached the peak of Mount Lodiel again, you cannot help but reflect on whether one of your companions may go free this night, or remain stranded in the downside as Rookie did after last time. Rookie, we're gonna get you out. Gonna get you out, buddy. Um, hey guys, so, like, I don't know what's going on up there with all them stars all acting real weird and stuff, but let me tell you something here. You ain't gonna find a better deal on all this stuff from anybody, I mean anybody, in the downside. You can trust me when I tell you that, okay? So, go ahead, stock up. Give me some stardust. What is this one? Fortified Sun Serum, plus one hope. Alright, we're gonna sell this, because I have no use for it. Alright, we can get this, plus four, on a talisman. What else do we have here? Traversing adversaries, pyre, bears, pyre recovers, flame equals up to 50% of damage dealt. That's kind of cool. It's 100, dang it, it's 140. I could get it if I sell this, right? I don't think I can sell this. Can I sell this? Why does it show this? Like, oh no. Okay, we're good. Just kidding. So, plus four on the talisman. Rookie's at uh, 15, 20, 16, 15, 16, 12. 
48% chance to turn immediately. Cool. You guys have a good day out there. Thanks. Huh. Alright. What do you got, Sandalwood? Mm. Wolford looks up as you approach and smiles. It's not, it's not. I never thought that I would say such things, my girl, but it is good to wear the raiments and the rights once more. The March of Time does have a way of healing certain hurts. Besides, the Nightwings of today, we are a very different beast than the triumphant winch, which took me, wait, blah, blah, which took me in almost a decade ago. Ours was a triumvirate of exactly three, well, four, with Tiso, who provide, uh, who proved to be an, who proved to be an exception. <laughs> Though historically, the Nightwings never took on more exiles than needed. I have mentioned my predecessor, Brighton, and my former companions, Arisa and Oralek. Perhaps naively, I'd hoped my time with them would not be relevant directly to what we now attempt. But seeing our stories are now intertwined, do let me know if there is more you wish to learn of them. Sure, let's ask about Brighton. That we don't know like anything about this guy. You inquire about Brighton, you understand was liberated prior to when Volford first joined the Nightwings. I never met Brighton in person, but I know him rather well by now. Though, for that matter, my girl, so do you. He studies your reaction for a moment, then... Brighton was born wealthy, but not special otherwise. You would have no reason to have heard of him. He was exiled for negligent misconduct. I do not know exactly why. I do not care for spreading rumors. I first heard of him through Arisa and Oralek, who found in me a suitable replacement following his liberation. They spoke little of him. Orlek gave the impression they did not see eye to eye, but he assured me I soon would hear from him myself. Indeed, as I became accustomed to the book, which you know well by now, I soon began to hear the voice. Oh. Wolford looks at you as if to see if you if you yet take his meaning. That's Brighton? You see, my girl, after Brighton's liberation, he assumed a new identity within the Commonwealth and a new responsibility to the Triumvirate which liberated him. That voice you hear from time to time, whensoever the stars align, it's his. He is no longer Brighton. He is now none other than the Archjustice Androboles the Ninth himself, the Grand Judge and figurehead under whose watch the Commonwealth is governed in this day. Those who violate the law of the Commonwealth Face sentencing by the appointed Archjustice. Wow, okay. Liberated exiles retain certain burdens to their old triumphants. They have much to thank them for. Not just their freedom, but their exalted status in the Commonwealth. The theocratic rulers of the Commonwealth do not wear masks and raiment simply for the sake of ceremony. They are not who they appear to be. Their public pasts are nothing but a fabrication. Like Brighton, they once were exiles, too. Brighton, that voice, he has no love for either one of us by now. He knows full well what we attempt to do, yet he is bound by the traditions of the rites. He shall always stand on ceremony and complain. But I think he knows, deep down, that he is powerless. How ironic, that one of such high status in the Commonwealth should be so frightened of some long-forgotten exiles such as we. Anyway, that's Brighton for you. He must have seen in you the potential to be one of his staunch supporters for a time. If that's the path you'd wanted to pursue, I should apologize. Now then, whom else should we talk about? Uh, we should talk about everyone because that was really interesting actually. You ask about Arisa, who you understand betrayed Orlek at the moment of his liberation, but then perished in the Shimmer Pool. I'm afraid you know the brunt. I'm afraid you know the brunt of it, my girl. But I suppose you ought to know something of Arisa's past, lest you be quick to judge her solely by her actions. Mind you, I would never make excuses for the terrible choice she ultimately made. But her life, I understand, was very difficult. Arisa had been exiled for the foulest of acts. You could see it plainly branded on her face. Such was the heinousness for, of what she did in the eyes of the Commonwealth. She was an apprentice blacksmith in her youth, taking up the post left by her brother. 
he had fallen in battle of the Blood Border, despite wielding their father's own lance and armor. Her father never quite recovered after this, and had grown cruel and detached. It was Arisa who took the brunt of his fury. He expected the impossible of her. One day, it was all too much for her. So when next he lashed out at her, she, well, she struck back. She struck back again, and again, and again. When they came for her, her father was gone, and she was not herself. She was promptly cast into the downside for the crime, but her hatred for the Commonwealth only grew. Arisa always was intense in her demeanor, haunted by her father's memory. More than that, her chief motive for wanting back her freedom was, in hindsight, not a healthy one. She longed to join our nation's enemies, to build for the High Wing Remnants, a great siege engine that should that could shatter the defenses of the Commonwealth and forever end our feud. What she ultimately did to Orelek, it was an act of pure and thoughtless desperation. I do not think that it was simply evil, nor do I think that it was personal. What is a praxis? I often wondered, though, if, in her final moments in the Shimmer Pool, she understood what she had done, and the depths to which she had fallen. For years I must admit I hated her, but now, my only hope is that she found a peace untenable during her relatively short life in the Downside and the Commonwealth. Furthermore, I hope the life of Arisa offers some perspective, yet to those of us who have not made the same mistakes. Now then, was there something else? Of course, we've got to ask about Orlek. You ask about Orlek. You ask about what Orlek was like when he and Volford first became acquainted. Volford remained silent for some time. I was very, very sick, you know, when I first landed in the downside. The long trip down the river must have been a little much for me. It was Orlek who found me. He could not have known of my capacity to read before he revived me. He was a physician, intolerant of the sight of suffering of any kind. Not just any physician, mind you, a gifted, highly decorated one. He served on the front. Back then, skirmishes erupted frequently, and those such as Orlek, they had to deal with many casualties on either side. In time, he said he grew repulsed by what he saw. This sowed in his heart a yearning for an end to all the bloodshed. So he tried to use his status to negotiate a treaty with the High Wing Remnants. It must have gone about how you'd expect. He was given direct orders to return to the front. But when he refused to soil his hands again, they cast him to the downside. Here, he gained the notice of the Night Wings, and before long, he grew to be one of the first or one of the finest rites conductors anyone had ever seen. He was instrumental in the liberation of his companions, whose role in the Triumvirate were later filled by Arisa and me. In time, Orlek's own opportunity for freedom had come up. He longed for it, so that, with his exalted status, he might stand a better chance of negotiating peace. However, on the evening of his liberation, well, you know the story from that point. Wolford breathes a heavy sigh. He and I were kindred spirits for a while. I could not bear to think that he was gone, and now, I still cannot entirely believe that he is back. He is our adversary now, transformed, grown cold. Still, part of me is happy that he lives. Make no mistake, of course, I shall not be swayed against our plan, not by Orlek or anyone. As I have said before, we share a higher calling now. As for Orlek, he wants his freedom, still, although I wonder if he still remembers why. Anyway, was there something else, my girl? Nope. You bid Volford a good afternoon, and leave him with his memories. My pleasure, reader. Reflecting on the past from time to time helps demonstrate how far we've come, and how much farther we have yet to go. So true. Let us commence the liberation rite. Once more you have gained the fall of Solium, where one among you may go free. But first, you shall have to prevail against the Pyre Hearts in the liberation rite. Reader, your companions are gathered there, under the fall. They shall be counting on you. Indeed, as the cycle of the rites turns ever faster, so too is our plan set in motion. 
My agents in the Commonwealth are beginning to cause a bit of a stir out there. And word has reached high places that the rights are ending. This is our chance. Though let us not despair should victory elude us here. We shall make the most of whatever the scribes have may have in store for us. That is to say, good luck, my girl. It's time. It's gonna be Brighton. Brighton's gonna to talk to us. What's this one about? Your adversary's pyre shall recover up to plus five each time they douse your pyre. I'm not doing that anymore. These are way too hard. They're pretty awesome looking though. All right, Brighton, where art thou? Through a wondrous miracle, there lies upon this highest mountain an inverted fall whose waters crash not toward the sea, but rush toward the heavens, the Book of Rites. Once more, the night wings gain the summit of the sacred Mount Aladiel to conduct the liberation rite, even as the stars themselves abandon you. Make good upon these final opportunities, Rita. This glorious age-old tradition coming to an end upon your watch. I trust the pyre hearts, your adversaries, shall not throw away this chance. Choose now who may go free, should they unfortunately fail. The pyres burn, and each of the triumphants is present and prepared. I concur. The pyres burn, and each of the triumphants is present and prepared. Then, anointed one of the pyre hearts, come forth now, and declare yourself, and pay any respects you have unto your adversaries, the Nightwings. Alright, here we go, it's gonna be silly. Sir Deluge tentatively slithers forward and starts to struggle with his mask. The, the, this knight is called Sir Deluge. He is among the most decorated knights of the Sea Dominion, having survived many, many battles. R -r Record well these proceedings, for all his valor sh -sh shall come, shall soon become the stuff of legend, and probably some of y -y -y your songs. Is it not so that you have fled from every battle in which you were expected to fight, Sir Deluge? Or have our messengers all been misled in this? The, the lies spread! No doubt, by the detestable Nightwings, their treachery is such that it dared steal one of our own triumphant. It is for the triumphants to decide who shall stand with them. If one of your pyre hearts was taken in by the Nightwings, then ask yourself why your companion would have left. The this knight knows why full well, because not all who hail from the Sea Dominion seem to know the meaning of honor. The now, Nightwings, for the grave injury which you have caused the pyre hearts, we hereby challenge you. Know that this knight would strongly prefer a traditional duel to the death. It's such a shame that bloodshed is against the rules. He somehow puts his mask back on. Fire hearts, protect your liege at all costs. His liberty depends upon it. And if this knight is not getting out of here, then neither are you. Alright, we got three worms. Nightwings, your decision on whose behalf you shall conduct the liberation rite. Reader, I would ask you to choose wisely, but I am sure you know no other way. And you, prepare your song, Tariq. Of course, Celeste. Whom do you intend to liberate? Oh, everything I do is done wisely. Well, better luck to me this time around, I guess. Who shall lend him support? Bertrude. That's right. We shall ensure his passage from this place. Sir Gilman. This time for certain. It is dark. But look, just g go easy on this knight, okay? Because he hasn't had it easy, and his fellow worm knights kind of want him out. Get out. Oh, slick. Where'd it go? Damn it. Did 
That's difficult. Oh god. Yeah, she can do a lot of damage, so I might just do try getting her on offense now. Moment, Sir Deluge. Ah! What is it? You? This knight is trying to concentrate here. This knight has a burning question which he must ask of you, sir. What do you gain if you prevail here? You, who fled the siege of the Spiral Sanctum, what would you do if you returned unto that land? Sir Deluge squirms in an uncomfortable-looking way, but does not respond. You would be returned unto an even higher station on the front, you know, sir. Good Sir Deluge. Or you might brave many more battles for the glory of the Commonwealth. Is that your wish? Shut up, Gilman, but well, what would you know of it? This night he shall survive, whatever shall whatever it shall take, whether in the Sea Dominion, the Commonwealth, or in this blasted place. Now, he is getting out of here. You could have survived too, but no. Now we are enemies, and once this night is free, he shall make everyone everybody in the Commonwealth aware of your great treachery. Whoa, go, go, go. Oh, no. Well, what? Why is it raining now? Ugh. Just as this knight was beginning to think things could not possibly get worse for him. Now our poor pyre is getting soaked. Although, although... Sir Deluge must have realized this disadvantage applies equal to you as it does to the Pyre Hearts. Henceforth, your pyres, sh your pyres shall be gradually drained by the rainfall. What? Oh, for the love. I thought I gained my stamina back. Oh crap, I just ran through that. Plus five raining. Oh no, oh no, oh no. We both did the same thing. Alright. I almost pity what transpired there. Shut up. These guys are hard to catch. To the oh my god, we've got a problem. <laughs> ah! Not mean to grab that. Yeah, get in there. Such I gotta get I gotta get it twice. They've gotta get it once. Oh no! I was so close too. I think they got it. I don't have anybody back here. Banished each in turn. Whoa, 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 where am I going? No! No! Rookie, I'm so sorry. Oh my god. We are so bad at this. The night wings made them work for it a bit. Thus ends the liberation rite. And thus, the scribes have chosen the exile appointed by the Pyre Hearts shall be free. Absolved of all misdeeds, return to glory in the Commonwealth. His adversary and all others shall remain to carry out their rightful sentences. Well, I guess that's what happens when I start getting my hopes up again, huh, chums? Sorry, Rookie. This knight, this knight, he... This knight, he, he, he... This knight prevailed! He celebrates and squirms, but then, although this means that now this knight must return to the front, more battles, to toil, mud, and marching orders, and 
Then quickly he turns to his fellow knights of the Pyre Hearts. You, Pyre Hearts, attention! Um, uh, are you sure none of you would wish to go in this knight's place? But in that instant, Sir Deluge is engulfed within the Shimmer Pool and disappears from view. You still hear him for some time after. Sir Deluge earned back his freedom. Accept this, for it is done. Godspeed, Sir Deluge. The eight scribes are watching from afar. By their grace, may the cycle of the rites keep turning for as long as possible. Ah, oh my gosh. I feel so gross. Hey, nice job. This knight wonders at times about why we are here, and which forces have transpired to bring us here together. Has Under King Ores himself taken an interest in this noble quest? Alright, we're just going to give you this one here. Press B to slash during a right. May the scribes have mercy on us all. Stars continue fading. Your chances to liberate your fellow exiles grow scarcer, but more frequent. Back at the Black Wagon, after the outcome of the liberation right against the Pyre Hearts, this knight hath shown us little favor. This knight is most dismayed. Although you did not succeed in liberating Ruki, there is some consolation. The rites shall continue, and before long you shall have another chance. We have but a few such liberation rites remaining, exactly how many I do not wish to speculate about, and yes, or and yet, until such time as we can better save for certain. Under no, under no circumstances would I suggest this is ideal. However, it is opportunity enough that our plan may as yet succeed. Although, all of these setbacks, fear, <sighs> Wolford trails off and falls silent. Some of the others exchange looks. They are beginning to understand. With the right soon ending, everything which Wolford has sought, both on his own for many years and now with all of you, all of it may be have been in vain. The hush spreads to the others. But not to you. <clears throat> you then proceed to do something that none of them seem to expect. You raise your voice. Each of your fellow exiles turns to you, their expressions asking you a question with no easy answer. What are we going to do? As you meet Sir Gilman's gaze, the words for the occasion begin to crystallize in your mind. You are searching to find the right words, as all your fellow exiles are looking to you now. Interact here to consider what to say. Interact to consider a different angle. And are now poised to seize upon a glorious opportunity. Oh, I see. You have to tell them that you have stood together some time without this quest and are now poised to seize... Can I choose something else? Oh, here you go. You tell them that you have stood together for some time, uh, together time after time throughout this quest and are now poised to seize upon glorious opportunity. Whoop! Okay. Your path to freedom still is laid bare before you all. True freedom is not waiting for you in the Commonwealth. Path is difficult enough without the added burden of despair. Oh, true freedom is not waiting for you in the Commonwealth. None of you pursue this quest with any guarantees. It is clear now that not all of you are going to return. But something far more vital is at stake. Or, meanwhile the stars themselves are shining upon you. Shining on for you. I like that one. All of what transpired cannot be mere chance, or they would spur you on to greater feats. You all now have a divine, divine duty to uphold, or glory awaits if you can persevere. Let's do that one. You all stand poised to ensure the world you leave behind for your loved ones. I like the for your loved ones. 
for each other. For each other. It's a world worth living in. Or is a world worthy of homecoming. I like that one. If you can believe any of this, or if you cannot see the merit in this quest, or when you look at it that way, I like that one. Which side of the world you would end up on is up to you, to all of you. But the achiever freedom is up to all of you. I like that one. To each one of you in your own way, or you need but see your journey to its end. After a brief period of re reflection, you share one last sentiment with the group. We have to keep going until we are free, or the only failure is to stray from the path, or the scribes shall always light our way. Enlightenment avails itself through struggle. We shall reunite among the s someday among the stars. Then you join the others in silence. Thus do you remain together with your thoughts. No one speaks for a time, but then... Ah, the struggle you describe, O oh Master Reader, it has been glorious indeed. Wherever you shall lead, this night shall follow without stopping once even to think. Teresa. You see them too, then miss, the scribes among the stars, how they are watching over us? They got no very... Thou wouldst dare to change this ancient world, reading one. And yet, thy words are tinged with certain truths. Skriha! Tiso vows to stand with you, no matter where your quest shall lead. May long the stars remain a light for you, reader madame. All the while, Volfred remains watching you intently. Mm. Then his expression softens and he smiles. Maron you are right, of course, my girl. We are the Nightwings. It is precisely as you said. We shall reunite someday among the stars. Lead us then, reader, to the end of our quest, in the dawn of the new age for all our kin. Everyone, for the night wings. Everyone responds in kind. They stand with you no matter what. They await the outcome of your vision of the stars, which burn with renewed fury, because now the last rites beckon. What? Plus one home oh, permanently, cool. We shall reunite someday. The stars above now burn with what appears a desperate fury, many more of them than usual. Your path is yours to choose amid a myriad of stars. Look upon them all. Are they all gonna be available? Fiesta. Ores. Melit. Jumur. Oh, just four. The stars of the eight scribes, they shine together now as one. The lone minstrel draws a breath, as though surprised by what he sees. He backs away and averts his eyes. This is another sign the rites are soon to cease. Few chances yet remain to confront the adversaries you have met during your journey. Alright, so let's see who we have. Oh, we're going here. The accusers are the top one, right? They are. Going to Triesta. I want to see who else is available. Chastity. Tempers. And the Withdrawn. Go. Back to the unicorn statue place. Ah, uh, so we shall soon square against Lendl the liar and the accusers. Him I know all too well. Perhaps you notice that he doesn't like us very much. He then tells you what he knows of your next adversary. Lendl the liar. The first adversary you confronted in the rites, not long after you took your first steps on the path to freedom. I barely remember this guy, actually. Former constable of the Commonwealth, he gained a reputation for his strict and brutal manner. By any means, he always caught the crook. Once he arrested a civilian who hated him, on suspicion of theft of Commonwealth artifacts that had gone missing. Lendell discovered the artifacts himself in the civilian's home. The suspect soon was exiled, still. He denied the charges, even as they cast him down river. The case was investigated further, though too late. Suspicions turned to Lendell. It turned out he planted the damning evidence himself, so he was exiled in turn. In the downside, he soon became acquainted with the rights, having heard of all of this from several people in high places. He asserted himself as the de facto leader of the accusers. They bent to his aggressive nature, and prevailed many times under his watch. Yet, each time his chance at liberty arose, the Nightwings either defeated him, or simply did not show. He wishes more than anything to outdo the Nightwings. 
perhaps even more so than to be free again. Let us give him another opportunity. For now, have a good night, my girl. You bid Volfred a good evening. At dawn, you shall take flight again. All right, and with that, it's been a pretty exciting episode in my opinion, but with that, we will call it quits for this one, and next time we will face Lendell and the Accusers. So thank you for watching, and hopefully we can get Rookie out of here. That's like my one goal now, is just, just to get Rookie out of here. So thanks for watching. I'll see you next time. Take care, and goodbye.